Well, there you go. That's called the Island Chieftain. And that's right behind where we are, because we are over, if I go over there, you can just see the yellow funnel there. So that's us over there. And of course, I, I can't film beyond that point, that fence there, which is, I still can't get over how stupid they, they're being. Uh, anyway, carry on. So I'm off with you again. What a lovely boat that is. Let's um, wait till we get back on the main road. Well, just walking ashore. I've got a, uh, everyone's sick on board ship, so uh, <laughs> I've got to go for a, some supplies to keep them going. Uh, one guy went to the hospital yesterday. He was there for six hours. Uh, yeah, that was in the A&E department of the local hospital. They're waiting to get some treatment. He, was, he wasn't well. He was. He's, uh, anyway, he's on uh, on antibiotics now. So anyway, uh, I was watching um, Amazon Prime the other day. Part of uh, part of my Amazon Prime deal is I get to watch programs like Clarkson's Farm. And. Uh, I don't know if any of you have got to watch Clarkson's Farm. It's absolutely fantastic. We're on series three now. Now I watched episode, I, I binge watched it. So I watched episode one, two and three the other day and then the other night I watched episode four. Now, say what you like about the Clarkson's character on the Grand Tour or the Top Gear or any other thing that he has. It, it, it is a character that he portrays and uh, you saw his real character in Clarkson's farm. Uh, yeah, it, there was some very... I'm not going to give the game away. I'm not going to tell you what happened. But, uh, yeah, he was uh, very emotional. Uh, he does care about his animals that, that he keeps. Uh, which is quite amazing, really, for his blasé attitude. He is very caring, which would indicate to me that he, he's telling the truth when he says it's his character that he's portraying on the shows, not him himself. Uh, so if you uh, ever get the opportunity, go and watch Clarkson's Farm. It, it really is an eye-opener. Uh, so Jeremy Clarkson has done more for British farming than the BBC have done with their farming programmes on the weekend for, for decades. Uh, they've been filming this uh, country file for, for years and they've done absolutely nothing. I, have, I, I didn't fully understand the plight of our British farmers and the BBC ever, obviously, they put such a delicate spin on stuff. You know, you don't want to upset people by saying, oh, farmers are hard done by. But, you know, when the price of fertiliser goes up by a thousand pounds, and the cost of your wheat goes down by a hundred pound a ton. It must be so frustrating because you're not making any money. And like he did in the first series, he only made a few pennies. At the end of all that, all the, I know he bought lots of farming equipment, but you would have thought that he would have made some money. Yeah, I know he's got to pay himself a wage and he's got his, his staff to pay a wage too. So they all made a little bit of money, but the farm itself, the business, uh, made virtually nothing, which is rather, rather shameful, really. Uh, anyway, what else has been going on? Well, since we've been in port, uh, we've had quite a lot of maintenance. Can you hear all that? That's the seagulls up there. There's uh, an empty house right on the corner here. I'll turn you around and you can see it. Yeah, right there is that on that corner house there. That's empty. Oh, there's, there's some broken windows up top. Uh, on the middle floor there's some broken windows. But I think it may have been a pub at one point. Because uh, you've got uh, stained glass windows and uh, of course You've got the uh, panelling either side of the door. It looks like a conventional front door, though. 
Uh, but I think that may have been a pub. We've got a satellite dish, which is murky, you can get on in your house. But definitely, I do believe that was a pub at one point. Maybe even a guest house with all the rooms upstairs. But yes, rather, rather disappointing to see such a decay going on in the world. So, anyway, like I said before, when I go ashore, I normally cut this little corner off here. So, I'm going to go shake that a little bit. Right. Yeah, I normally cut that corner off, so I don't tend to see the, uh, the big kingfisher up there. I do like to see a little bit of art. And that's, that's why I was quite excited to see the Bankses uh, when, when I did get to see them. Um, I think it was two years ago. Um, we were during the summer layup like we are now. And I actually walked up to Alton Broads from here. It's quite a long walk from, uh, from the ship. Because whatever we've got to do, we've got to walk down to here anyway uh, before we can cross over the railway. Anyway, I walked to, North, walked to Alton Broads and had a rather nice day out. I did record it, so it's in my back history, as it were, my back catalogue of movies. So here we are, we're crossing the bridge again. Over, I don't know what the river's called here, actually. Some estuary on the way up to Alton Broad. And it's a... Uh, it's a bit like home really, but at the moment it looks like the tide's coming in. So that will be filling the Alton Broads with uh, a mixture of salt water and sea water, uh, fresh water, sorry. Uh, so that will be like a brine mixture that they have on these uh, little estuaries. And of course, as you know, Ships float differently in different waters. Salt water, the, the ship floats out of the water more than it does in fresh water. Uh, there, there's a, the monuments right behind me over there. Uh, the sea, seafarers staring out to sea. There's nothing to... Uh, nothing... Like we can't get my words modelled up. There's nothing to see at the moment because you can't get very close because they've boarded it up with all this fencing. Let's turn you around and have a look. There you go. So you've got all that fencing. I quite, can't quite make out what it says uh, from this distance. But yeah, it's uh, looking out to sea, life boy there. Maybe it was a lifeguard, maybe it was a lifeboat crew. But anyway, but it does look like there's a bit of subsidence going on Bit of a shame if it is. Hey, it's all right. You're in public. <laughs> you, have got some Karen in front of me. He thinks I'm recording him. Yeah. What a loser. Uh, anyway, um, like I say, you're out in public. You can't. There's no expectation of privacy in public. Now if we look back that way, we can see that boat that we saw earlier. Let's turn you right around. Well, there's that boat, right in the distance there, and right next to our little boat. Island Chieftain, it said. Battery hybrid. Oh, well, that's good for the environment, isn't it? Not. Anyway, carry on. How strange that someone would say that. Oh, we were just talking about this the other day. How, you know, we, there's no expectation of privacy in public. So we're coming up to a crossing. No, we're not going to cross over. We're just going to carry on walking around until we get to, uh, to our little shop where I can go get some... Uh, decongestants and headache stuff and all that all that good stuff that people get when they 
when they're ill. Rather busy road here, so I might just uh, I might just stop until I come on the way back and record some more stuff. Anyway, I don't think I've yeah I've gone on for quite a few minutes now, so I'll give it a rest and I'll do a bit more on the way back. Okay, catch you later. There we go. There's the bridge again. The, the, uh, this huge, great monstrosity of a bridge. Doesn't look too bad, actually. Looks quite uh, futuristic. It obviously uh, pivots forward to join the two halves of the, of the road. Uh, and as you can see, there's quite a few ships underneath it. And of course, if we turn this way over here, we've got uh, what looks like a tiny dredger. It's got... Uh, looks like it's got a crane on board with a bucket device that it probably dips in the water and picks up the gravel. Uh, so that one's called Cherry Sands and that's based near me in Grimsby. Then we've got Border Force over here. Apparently there's nobody to man these ships so that's why they don't go out. They've got a port -a loo on deck because they don't want the, the uh, scallywags getting into the accommodation. And uh, they, well, they've got a fast rescue boat at the, at the rear, look by the looks of it. That one over there is Alert, based in London. There's the mighty CFAS Endeavour over there. And of course, there's the island Chieftain over there. Now, oh, that's got to be really uneconomical or should I say unhealthy for the climate with all those if it's got batteries on board a battery hybrid it says I was going to do a story about electric cars and uh, I've done a bit more research so I'm glad I didn't publish that one because I'd have to publish another one but there's a little story I read into uh, the other day that says that Brand new petrol cars would have to do 100,000 miles to equal the emissions of a brand new electric car. So that's right, your, your, e, your petrol car is still green up to 100,000 miles. Greener than that. <laughs> I find that absolutely crazy because my car is only 17 years old. I say only 17 years old, I bought it uh, uh, 14 years ago and I've only just come up to about 87,000 miles now. So my car's still greener than the greenest EV car. Isn't that amazing? Uh, anyway, so I'm going to um, carry on walking back this way until I, until I get back to the main road and then I'll stop and I'll start recording when I'm back on the on the quiet little street that goes back to my ship. So, 